Today, we are talking about the viral documentary, You Are What You Eat, and why doing what they say in that Netflix documentary may actually increase your risk for cardiovascular disease. And of course, I'm gonna share with you what you can do instead to lower your risk for cardiovascular disease and improve your chances to live a longer and healthier life. My name is Andrew Martin, I'm a biologist, and I've been helping people lose weight, heal their gut, rebalance their hormones, and optimize their health for almost a decade here. And so to get the full picture on what's going on here, we need to rewind a little bit to 2019 when the first documentary, Game Changers, was released. Now, these two are not linked to each other, but you'll see why they are very similar. The documentary, Game Changers, in 2019, focused on elite athletes who were very strong and super fit and also ate a plant-based diet. And the public went absolutely insane because of the anecdotal evidence they, that they provided in the documentary showed that if you don't eat a vegan diet, you're going to die. That's basically what they say. And they said that, you know, if you eat a vegan diet, your performance is going, going to go up and all this amazing stuff about going vegan. And before I knew it, half my clients were asking me if they should go vegan. But the documentary went under a lot of scrutiny because they used evidence that was anecdotal and they cherry picked science and they didn't provide all the details of the real science that is up to date. And it was really clear that they had a massive conflict of interest because the companies that supported the documentary sold plant-based products. So they were profiting off people going plant-based and then buying their products, right? Massive conflict of interest. But the, the, the documentary itself did do a really good job at persuading the general public to go plant-based. So now we had all these people um, flooding into you know going vegan. But most of the people who look at the research with no skin in the game and didn't have uh, you know a plant-based company would tell you, that the documentary and the research behind it was completely biased. So that was 2019. But now we've got a new documentary and it's called You Are What You Eat. It's on Netflix. And it bases its premise off a study that was done on twins where they had one twin eat an omnivore diet and one twin eat a vegan diet. At the beginning of the study, they compared their, they took their metrics. So they took their LDL cholesterol, their triglycerides, their HDL cholesterol, and their body weight. And then over eight weeks, they measured those things. And at the end of the eight weeks, they determined that eating a plant-based diet lowered LDL cholesterol and therefore your risk for cardiovascular disease. And then they made a documentary about it. But there are several problems with the documentary and the study behind the documentary that show that this is probably not something that we should listen to. So I'm going to share with you the facts and what the science is actually telling us and then show you a better way to reduce your cardiovascular, your, your risk for cardiovascular disease and live a longer and fuller life, okay? So the first thing is that the study that the documentary is based on focused primarily on LDL cholesterol. So you can see in, in this study that the group of people that ate vegan did have a significant reduction in LDL cholesterol. So you can see that their cholesterol went down and the their LDL cholesterol went down and the omnivorous group did not go down as much. The problem is LDL cholesterol has a very weak association with cardiovascular disease. There has been a lot of research done recently showing this, that LDL cholesterol isn't the best predictor of cardiovascular disease. And in fact, some research shows that having too low of, of, cardi of LDL cholesterol is a risk and having too high is a risk and being in the middle is a risk. So we don't know, and there needs to be more research done ar around the topic, but there, most of the, of the more recent research is showing that it's not the best predictor. And so this documentary and this study focused on the wrong thing. Sure, it did lower LDL cholesterol when people went vegan. But what the research is finding is that what really matters for cardiovascular disease and longevity is your HDL cholesterol, your ratio of HDL cholesterol to total cholesterol, and your triglycerides. So let's take a look at those metrics that actually matter that this study. So the, the group of uh, people who are eating vegan their HDL cholesterol actually went down, which is a bad, like that's what considered your good cholesterol. That is a negative outcome in terms of cardiovascular disease. We want, we don't want our HDL cholesterol to come down, especially because it started at 60. Like we want it to be higher than that. And so people's, the HDL cholesterol for people who are vegan went from 60 to 56. That is not a good outcome. The omnivore group, theirs went up a little bit. And so they had a better outcome for HDL. As far as triglycerides go, the group who ate vegan, their triglycerides actually went up from baseline while the omnivore group went down. So two of the metrics that matter 
more for cardiovascular disease lends it in favor of the omnivore group. And it was never once mentioned in the documentary. Never once. And barely talked about as well in the, in the uh, actual research paper. Okay. So that's concerning to me. And then the study also measured people's weight. And so you can see on the, on the graph here that the vegan group did lose more weight. When you look deeper into this, when you, if you go into the supplemental resources like I did, you'll find that the vegan group actually ate 200 less calories per day than the omnivore group. So that explains the weight loss very easily. But then we also don't have the more important metrics of what, cha- what was their body fat percentage change and what was their muscle mass change. Because did the vegan group just lose muscle and bone and not lose body fat? We don't know. And it could be the case if they weren't getting enough protein in. And so those things weren't measured. And it could have been granted, like these studies, they are very expensive. And so there are limitations to what we can measure. But that would be something that would be absolutely critical <laughs> to, to measure for health outcomes and longevity. The second thing is that waist circumference was measured at the beginning of the study, but was not reported at the end. So they took the time in the beginning of the study to measure their waist circumference, but then after eight weeks, either didn't measure it or did measure it and didn't report it. And either one is not good, like not a good sign that that is the case. Like it should have been there based on all of the data that was provided in the study. It's just very odd that that was left out. The other big oversight, in my opinion, is that they had for the first four weeks, they had their meals prepared for them. So it was very controlled that they were eating similar amounts and that they're eating similar quality of food. But for the next four weeks, they let them prepare their own meals. And if you tell someone to go prepare their own meal, but it has to be vegan, versus you say, prepare your own meal, and it can be whatever you want, the person who's eating vegan is going to eat a cleaner, more nutritious meal most of the time because they're limited to vegetables and and, and healthier options, right? It does not to say that eating omnivore is bad. It just opens up Pandora's box to things that could be bad. So you live, you give people the freedom to go have burgers and McDonald's or whatever, right? And it should have been controlled as far as like they had to eat healthy, lean meats for the omnivore group with you know vegetables and starches and things like that in balance. And it should have been more controlled because now we just don't know. Like the ve- the vegan group could have just not known what to do, and so they. You know, they did, they did better because they stuck to very basic things while the omnivore group just went back to what they were doing. And so there needed to be more control in the study. There just wasn't enough of it. And like I mentioned, there's limitations to studies like this because they are very expensive. With that said, when very expensive studies are being done, what do they do? They get funding and guess who? Beyond Meat funded this study. So there was a massive conflict of interest. And do you think that if Beyond Meat is funding a study that compares vegan, that compares vegan to omnivore, that they're not going to push for the vegan group to have a favorable outcome? Of course they are, because they wouldn't fund a study that ultimately makes them less money. And so there is a just a massive conflict of interest here. Like, what are we doing? We we can't be listening to studies like this that are clearly biased and are not designed to prioritize health outcomes for people. They're designed to prioritize profits for businesses that sell products pushing an agenda. And then people fall into this trap of believing them because they make super convincing documentaries and studies and put super convincing data out there, but they're only convincing because they've manipulated facts in their favor. So if you want to reduce your risk for cardiovascular disease and live a longer life, my advice is don't do that. (laughs) And when these, when these documentaries come out in the future, take them with a grain of salt and do your research into the facts of the studies that are backing them and look at the whole picture because all of them, even a carnivore diet is our carnivore documentary is probably going to come out one day too, if there's not already one, and it's going to push the carnivore. Like it's going to push carnivore and it's going to leave out facts that support vegan. And so you have to take these things with a grain of salt and, and make your decisions based on someone that you trust and is not pushing an outside agenda. That is my personal advice for you. And so instead, if you want to reduce your risk for cardiovascular disease and live a longer life, here is what I would do. Number one, for nutrition, I would eat whole nutrient dense foods. That includes vegetables, 
It includes fruits, but it also includes meats. Can we all just agree that vegetables and lean meat are both healthy for you? And meat has nutrients and and sources of protein that vegetables cannot have and vice versa. And it'd be very good for us to do both of them. <laughs> Number two, but no one's going to tell you that because eating omnivore is like no one makes money off of it. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's just it's not gonna be highly profitable for anybody. So that's number one. Number two is reduce sugar intake and reduce alcohol intake. We know that those things put you at a higher risk of cardiovascular disease and uh, shorten lifespan. And same with smoking. We wanna not smoke. For exercise, walk each day, do some cardiovascular exercise, and do some strength training. You don't have to make it super complex, complex, but the that's like the, if I were to, to tier it, it'd be walk every day. Once you've got that dialed in, do some strength training, couple times a week. And once you have that dial in, add in some cardiovascular exercise, additionally to walking, because walking is going to cover most of it. But you got to make sure you're at least walking every day. It's going to lower your blood pressure. It's going to lower your triglycerides, which we know are some of the most contributing factors to cardiovascular disease. Number three, we have to sleep seven to nine hours. There are a lot of tactics you can do to improve your sleep. Our favorite is the three, two, one rule, which is three hours before bed, you stop eating. Two hours before bed, you stop drinking. And one hour before bed, we stop seeing blue lights. So that sets your, you up for success to get to bed and be able to sleep well. And then you can optimize your sleep environment with like blackout curtains, the, a good temperature of your room, a lukewarm shower before bed. Those things will all help you improve the quality and the quantity of sleep that you get. But first you have to like set aside enough time. Like if you're getting to bed at... 1 a.m. and waking up at 5, like it's just, we're not going to get enough sleep, right? It's pretty basic math. And the last thing is managing your stress. If we can manage our stress, we're going to reduce our risk for cardiovascular disease and all-cause mortality, and we're going to ex extend our lifespan and our health span. So a lot of ways you can do that, but I mean, my favorite is just like doing stuff that you like with people that you like. Right? It's like the best way to lower stress, like go for a walk with your wife or go for a hike or you know, you can do some meditation or yoga or whatever it might be, but we have to make sure that our stress is under control. If it's elevated for a long period of time, we just increase our risk for all these things. So I hope this video was helpful and I hope it sheds some light on what you can do to improve your cardiovascular health and reduce your risk for disease. And also hopefully it gave you some insights on not falling into the trap that these documentaries and studies like not falling into their agenda that's pushing you one way or another just if i can say anything it's listen to the research the actual research and the full depth of it that isn't pushing any one agenda one way or another it's got to be unbiased and it's got to be focused on health outcomes not on driving you to live a certain way or eat a certain way or exercise a certain way so hope this is helpful and if you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one.